This is one of my favorite books, and my mom used to read me this book when I was four like you. It's called The Forgotten Bear by Molly Bretz. I see a lot of really cool illustrations on the cover. What do you think this book's going to be about? I see a lot of different kinds of animals. I see a tree and a tree house and some birds. These are called starlings. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen in this book called The Forgotten Bear by Molly Brett. Molly Brett was the author and the illustrator. So she did the words and the pictures. When you look on the inside title page, it also says The Forgotten Bear. And your mommies and daddies can tell by the bottom how old this book is. It's only a little bit older than me, so that's pretty old. The Forgotten Bear by Molly Brett. I see more illustrations here about teddy bears. That might give you a clue about what's gonna happen inside. Here's the first illustration. It says, when the mice started to whisper about stuffing Buffy, the teddy bear with only one eye and holes in his paws decided that he must get out of the attic. So this teddy bear right here, he only has one eye and he has some holes in his fur. His name is Buffy. He's in the attic. The attic is a top part of a house. Sometimes you could store things there. I don't have an attic at my house. He had been put away there when the little girl who owned him grew into a big girl who did not want to play with teddy bears anymore. So in the attic, he stayed day after day and month after month until everybody had forgotten Buffy except the mice. He had been fond of them for he was very lonely until the day when Mr. Mouse came up to him boldly and squeaked, Mother says, could you spare a bit of your stuffing for our nest? Then Buffy scowled, that means a cranky face, and growled quite fiercely and shook his head so hard that the cobweb between his ears fell off. Buffy did not want to give away his stuffing. Here's the next illustration. Uh-oh. What's going to happen to Buffy now? <clears throat> then the bear shook himself, for he was very dusty, and did a few exercises, for he was very stiff after not being played with for such a long time. Those mice will nibble a hole in my middle and steal my stuffing when I'm asleep, he thought. And he prowled all around the attic looking for a way of escape. Oh, here's the word escape. The trap door in the floor was bolted and there was no window and only a small skylight in the low roof. Buffy found a little child's old umbrella among the odds and ends piled in the corner and used it to push the skylight open, for the thought of losing his stuffing had made him feel both clever and adventurous. So many big words. This is a skylight up here. And he was trying to get out of it. It's like a window in the ceiling. Miss Robin has one of those. Those are really cool. He feels clever and adventurous. Clever is like super smart, like good ideas. And adventurous means he's trying to do something new and brave. Then he hooked the handle on the edge and climbed up and out onto the roof, much to the surprise of a family of starlings who sat there gossiping. Next moment, the little bear was rolling and bumping over the tiles, sloping so steeply to the edge. Luckily, the starlings came to his rescue and caught hold of him just in time to stop his wild career into space. So here is Buffy. These birds are called the starlings, and the roof has a slope. Slope means it's like going down like a sliding board. So he was rolling down and the starlings helped him. They caught him and helped him. Here's the next illustration. Oh, that umbrella came in handy. Oh, after thanking them, Buffy climbed up and collected his umbrella. Then he sat on the tiles and looked down. It was a very long way to the ground. 
Buffy opened the umbrella, shut his one eye tight, and jumped. The umbrella acted as a parachute, and he floated down quite gently, landing in the garden of the house next door. The little bear looked up at a window, which had bars on it, and through them, three furry faces were watching him. Ooh, see those fa furry faces? Mm, who's watching him? They belonged to three teddy bears. The biggest bear pushed open the window. I am Tough Bear, he growled in a very gruff voice. And this is Tinkle Bear, because she hums a tune instead of growling. And I am Tiny Bear, said the little one in a very squeaky voice. That reminds me of the Goldilocks story that we read. That story had three bears also. I wonder if they're going to be kind to Buffy. Oh, there they are. Look out the window. Here's the next illustration. Oh, looks like they are being kind to him. Buffy had told them, Buffy told them his name and explained that his owner had forgotten all about him. May I play with you? He asked politely. The three bears climbed out of the window and slid down a drain pipe. This is a drain pipe all the way down, like the It's a Bitsy Spider song. They shook paws with Buffy and Tough Bear. Growl. I'm sorry. They shook with paws with Buffy and Tough Bear growled. The children have gone to the sea today and left us behind. So we are going to have a holiday too, and you may join us if you like. So all these bears are feeling lonely because they have, their owners weren't there to play with them. We have a kettle. That's like something you can make tea in. And a mug. Buns in a paper bag. And a box of matches in Tough Bear's trouser pocket. That means his pants. Said Tinkle Bear in her tinkling voice. We are going to camp in the wood all day. Hooray, hooray. Squeaked Tiny Bear getting quite excited. So they set off with Tough Bear leading the way. We'll be wild bears, he growled as the others followed him. Across the buttercup field, over the stepping stones of the little stream, and round the great tree trunks in the wood. Ooh, a stream is a little bit of water. You know, going on stepping stones to go over the water. They're going to have a picnic in the woods. Did you ever take a walk in the woods and have a picnic with your family? Here's the next illustration. Ooh, who are they going to meet in this part? I see some new characters that they haven't seen yet. Buffy opened his umbrella and stuck the handle in the ground. Then Tough Bear and Tinkle Bear hung their clothes round it to make a tent. Because wild bears only wear fur coats. Tiny Bear cried because his clothes were sewn on. Then Buffy and Tough Bear went hunting and tracked out something which looked like a scrubbing brush until it uncurled itself and scuttled away. Do you see an animal that looks like a scrubbing brush? Yeah, I think it's this hedgehog. They didn't know what he was because these guys are toy bears. They're toy teddy bears. They don't know how to live in the woods. But today they're pretending to be wild bears who live in the woods, but they don't even know what they're doing. After that, they climbed trees and swung on the branches. Tiny Bear fell off when an owl popped out of a hole to look at him. See right here? Here's Tiny Bear. He fell off the branch. He was scared by the owl. Buffy found a store of nuts, but he did not know that they belonged to Mr. and Mrs. Gray Squirrel. Tinkle Bear found two little wax pots of honey in a bumblebee's nest. Tiny Bear found some wild strawberries. Tough Bear gathered sticks and made a campfire. Tinkle Bear tied a leaf for a patch over Buffy's missing eye. Then she hung the kettle over the fire and when it boiled, they made elderflower tea. There was a currant bun each and just enough honey to attract a wasp and make the bears sticky. They were wondering how to crack the nuts when... <gasps> the cliffhanger. I wonder what's going to happen next. They're collecting berries and nuts 
and they're feeling sticky. And it says when. Ooh. Oh, it's in the wrong page. Let's see. Nope, it's the right page. Here is a picture of all the things they're doing, but guess what? There are no words on this page. No words on this page. Isn't that cool? This is just like two pages of illustrations. Let's look closely. I see birds and flowers and trees, owls. There's the umbrella that Buffy used. There's the hedgehog. They made some tea. There's a fire. They had currant buns, which are like biscuits. There's some berries. There's the patch over Buffy's eye. I bet you noticed more things in this picture too. I see more animals. I see the wasp. Wow. But I don't know what's going to happen next. There's no words on this page. I have to turn the next page and find out what happens next. It says when. Now here's what happens next. There was an angry scolding in the branches above, followed by a shower of fur cones. The squirrels had discovered the loss of their nuts. Uh-oh. The squirrels were not very happy, and they were throwing pine cones at the bears. Tough Bear and the others crawled into their tent, and there they stayed until the angry squirrels had collected their nuts and gone away. Then Buffy had a wonderful idea. I shall build a house in the treetop and never go back to the attic, he growled. Tough Bear, Tinkle Bear, and Tiny Bear soon helped him to build a little home among the leaves and branches. When it was finished, they had to say goodbye, put on their clothes, and go, back, go home in time to welcome the children back from the sea. So Tough Bear, Tinkle Bear, and Tiny Bear have owners have kids that play with them they were just busy but Buffy his owner got too big and left him in the attic so he wants to live in the woods forever you think that's going to work out for him there's his eye patch and some branches and things they're going to use to build him a tree house do you think he's going to like to live in the woods hmm here's the next picture uh oh something has happened it looks dangerous what do you think is going to happen in the woods? The animals look frightened. Buffy curled up in his treetop house and slept soundly until the birds wakened him with their morning song. He was so happy in his new home all day until suddenly the wind started to blow hard. Leaves rustled, branches waved wildly, and Buffy's home was blown out of the tree in a scatter of sticks. The little bear had to hang on tight to a branch until the wind had passed. Then he climbed to the top of the tree. Down below, he saw a strange sight. Birds and animals were hurrying to the shelter of the wood, and in the distance, looming up against the sky, was an enormous yellow dragon grubbing up great mouthfuls of earth in its jaws. Do you think that's a dragon? Is that your guess? Is that a dragon? That's what Buffy thinks it is. Grass, flowers, bushes, and the little homes among them were fast disappearing as ground was cleared and ditches dug for a new road. Buffy felt very sorry for the animals who were being chased away. I will shoot that dragon, he growled fiercely, scrambling down the tree trunk as fast. <gasps> There's no words on this page. Let's see what happens next. As he could, and wishing his umbrella was a gun, the brave bear soon made a bow from the, a hazel sapling and the ribbon around his neck. So he made a little bow. Right here. He's going to try to get that dragon. With a paw full of arrows made from sticks, he marched out of the wood to shoot the dragon. But as he got nearer, the dragon seemed to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And how he roared and rumbled. 
hiding behind a foxglove. That's this kind of plant right here, a foxglove. Buffy aimed his bow straight at the great yellow monster. Ping! went an arrow. And pong! Ping! went two more against his steel sides. The dragon's head sank slowly to the ground and his roaring ceased. I have shot the dragon, growled. There's no words here. Growled who? What's his name? Do you remember? Buffy, proudly, feeling very pleased with himself. But he spoke too soon, for you can never tell with dragons. Up jerked the great yellow head again. The roarings and rumbling sounded louder than ever, and though the little bear shot all his remaining arrows, the dragon did not even seem to feel them. Instead, he suddenly lurched round and came straight at Buffy, who dived into a nearby rabbit hole. Uh-oh. Lurched around means he turned around real fast. Uh-oh. He's coming right for Buffy. So he jumped into a rabbit hole down under the ground. He crawled down a long, dark passage and came to a small cave at the end where four baby rabbits sat huddled together, listening to the rumbling noises overhead. You can't stay here, growled Buffy. The yellow dragon is coming. Run away as fast as you can. But the bunnies were too frightened to move. So the bear pushed them gently along the passage until they could run out and run, I'm sorry, and away to the safety of the wood. But before he could follow, so he helped the bunnies. That was kind. He's helping the animals get out. He says before he could follow, now this is the word them, them, <clears throat> huge jaws tore through the roof and Buffy was scooped up with a mouthful of earth. High in the air he went and then bump, he landed on top of a lorry in a shower of earth and stones. A lorry is another word for a truck. There's a truck way over here. And in some places in the world, they call that a lorry. As the lorry was driven through the wood, branches brushed the top, and the little bear was caught up in them. There he hung, unable to move, while the lorry rumbled on, and presently a boy and a girl came by and saw him. So there they are. Uh-oh. The truck kept going. He was stuck in a tree. And there's a little boy and a girl who came and saw him. Do you think they're going to help him? They soon climbed the tree and released the little bear. Then they took him home and their mother gave him a much needed bath. When he was clean and dry, she mended the holes in his paws, sewed on a twinkling button to replace his missing eye, and tied a new ribbon around his neck. That's very kind. He really wanted someone to play with him, didn't he? This boy and girl took him home and washed him, fixed his eye, and gave him a new ribbon. Wow. How about that? Now he's loved now again. He has someone to take care of him again. Now, Buffy is a favorite toy with the children, who will never forget finding a wild teddy bear in the wood. Sometimes he's taken with them for a picnic and meets Tough Bear, Tinkle Bear, and Tiny Bear again. They do not speak when the children are there, but Buffy gives them a wink with his new twinkling button eye. He never went back to look for his umbrella, so perhaps the woodland animals find it useful when going home from a party on a wet night. So now Buffy has a family and a new eye. And Tough Bear, Tinkle Bear, and Tiny Bear go to the, the woods with their family sometimes. And here's the animals. Buffy's envisioning. He's guessing. He's predicting that maybe they use his umbrella when it rains. And that's one of my favorite books called The Forgotten Bear. Sorry, this keeps falling. The Forgotten Bear by Molly Brett. And I'm sitting on my couch with a blankie, 
This is something that you can do when you're ready to have a nap time or a rest time. Maybe your mom will say, go listen to that story so you can rest for a while. That would be a kind thing to do. The Forgotten Bear by Molly Bretz. I hope you enjoyed the story.